So this bit's gonna probably gonna be pretty dull. Um, I'll just speed it up in a minute. Uh, I'm basically getting some of my plaster rocks and breaking bits off and just sticking them in wherever I feel like. I've kind of got a pretty good idea in my head. I don't know what it's going to look like, like the final version, but I've got a pretty good idea in my head um, what I'm going for, at least at this point. So he, here I am, I've got a little bit of plaster um, and it's it's got some straight edges on that just don't look natural. So I've got a pair of pliers and I'm just making it look more natural, you know, uh, just by getting off any weird straight edges where I've broken it off. Because you break it off, you end up the straight edge where you broke it off. Not rocket science. It's one of my favorite sayings. Um, and then I'm just kind of sticking them in there. Again, PVA glue. You can never have too much of that. Um, it can take a little time to dry, but like I say, I wasn't doing this with any kind of time scale. I'd stick these in and just wander off and come back the next day or the day after that. So, you know, you're getting the very condensed version. Um, so I'll speed it up and you'll, you'll just see me just, just putting little bits and bobs in. Yeah. So yeah, at this point I'm, I'm, it's starting to make more sense to me as I'm making it. Um, I mean, genuinely, when I make these things, I'm really not sure what, where I'm going. So this stuff is gravel. I can't remember. I've had this probably years and years in a tub. I, I suspect it's fish tank um, gravel just buy it from wherever some pet shop or something because um, it's nice and clean and it all, it's all a fairly uniform size so that was kind of big gravel as I think of it and this I'm just putting in is a smaller size gravel uh, just getting a brush and brushing it off where I don't want it because I don't want it on my uh, big rocks um, I want it a little bit on the big rocks, like at the edge, but I don't, you know, wherever I don't want it. So you saw me, this is um, isopropanol um, and 50% and isopropanol and 50% water. Um, and I spray that on it um, because this is watered down PVA, um, which waters down really well. As you can see, here I am squeezing in. The isoprope acts as like a flow aid. So when I spray it with iso and then pour this diluted PVA on it, the iso helps the um, PVA glue just soak in, get between all of the, the rocks and stuff. I mean, it's watered down, but the iso really helps it sort of get in there. So as you can see, I'm not mucking about. I've just watered it down and I'm just literally pouring it on all over anything that isn't stuck down, which is 
all of those pebbles and those little i did put a bit of pva under those little bits of rock but you know this stuff will really cement it in when this when this thing's finished <laughs> it, none of it's going anywhere it is solid so pva dries completely clear the water just evaporates the isopropanol just um evaporates so all you're left with is clear glue um that's that's dry and set so when it's all dried out it looks okay but everything's just glued in i haven't glued in all of the little stones individually you know can you imagine that wow well wow, boring that would be so yeah um that's all i'm doing i'm just literally uh pouring that everywhere and then getting a cloth and wiping it all up again because i made such a bloody mess um yeah but as you can see i haven't done anything so far in any of this build where you need to be careful where you need to be exact and and get everything just right this is really easy stuff to do you literally just oh an old battlefield 4 t-shirt that's not mine i suspect that's my son's that we picked up in some game show or something and uh and now it's mopping up pva well that's the end of that t-shirt um what was i saying yes it's just slapdash it's very easy to do this because you don't have to be careful you don't have to have you know brilliant fine motor skills to get exact painting or you know you literally just slap it all on um the only reason i'm mopping this up by the way you don't need to um it just helps it dry out a bit quicker though again i almost certainly just wandered off for a couple of days mm. um yeah how is this boring everyone should be and by the magic of time travel uh here we are it's all dry nothing's moving i have no idea what i was saying at that point i'm probably just poking pebbles to make sure that they're all stuck down um and in that cup i was basically just mixing some brown acrylic paint um i haven't got a clue what i'm doing with that cloth um oh yeah i suspect i was cleaning some little pebbles off off the big rocks because i like my big rocks to be fairly clean there you go there you go tip it right up nothing moves poke it with your finger nothing's moving so all of the sculptor mode that you can see which is probably what i'm saying there i haven't got a clue what i'm saying i'm going to paint brown um now at the end at the end of this build you won't see 99 percent oh, what color is that burnt umber there you go burnt umber it's not brown <laughs> it looks like brown to me um at the end of this 99 percent of this brown you won't see but it's there as a background for the things that you do see and again as i mentioned uh literally a minute ago i'm not being careful about this i am literally slapping this stuff on and i need to paint all of the sculptor mode trying not to get it on the big rocks it's not critical if i get a few little splashes on which i already have there by the looks of it um it's not critical but you don't want to you know you just be reasonably careful but i'm not but not not picky about it as you can see i've got a big brush um a load of slightly watered down and burnt umber acrylic and this paint by the way came from like the pound shop or the dollar store as you say in the us or i'm sure every country has a similar sort of thing so it's literally the pound shop everything's a pound and they had some acrylic paint in there and i saw them pick them up i didn't want them <laughs> but, you know <laughs> it's a pound um and this is when it comes in really handy because it's it i just i don't worry about the cost of the paint or anything just 
slap it on there. Right, I think it's time to speed this up again. Right, sod it. I've cut a chunk out because you know what someone painting a thing brown looks like. <laughs> I don't think you need to watch that even sped up. So here you go. I've painted all of the brown bits brown. Fascinating. Fascinating. Um, and then, as usual, leave it to dry. And it's dry. Um, so I'm going to paint what is that's going to be a river in the middle. So what I'm going to do, and I think in the final version, this didn't really work out. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is paint the river bed a slightly gradiated um, brown um, because you're going to be able to see the riverbed and riverbeds are not all one color you know um and that's the thing that you'll that about making a model look more realistic is what do things actually look like in the real world and it's amazing just how colorful simple things are rocks are not gray you know, in your head, you, th you think, oh, I'll paint a rock. What color? Gray. You paint it gray and it doesn't look like a rock. It looks like a, a pretend rock. It looks like a toy rock. And the same with things like the riverbed. You need lots of different um, shades in there. So as you can see, I'm painting this a lighter color um, brown. Um, let's speed it up. Hang on. So... Yeah, that's literally what's going on. I'm um, even at this fast speed. This could be like pulling teeth. So I'm trying not to get paint on the the rocks, um, but I'm not being careful about the gravel. Um, and the same with the land. When I painted it, I just painted over everything except for the big rocks. Um, and I fix that later, but it's easier to fix that afterwards than to paint around every single bit of gravel, as you can imagine. So, um, and again, none of this requires you to be <laughs> artistic or or even creative. Um, all, you, all you have to do is kind of be sort of mindful of what, things really look like um, rather than the picture in your head um, and here I'm just making the brown a bit lighter here by just adding some white acrylic again from the pan shop um, and also watch Luke's APS's channel and he will explain some great techniques for um, for doing some of these things especially with the big rocks when i first saw him paint big rocks in the way that i'm about to paint them my mind was blown okay so prepare for that um i hope it has the same effect on you so yeah so you see what i'm basically doing is i painted it all the darker color the darker brown and then I've painted around the edge in a lighter brown because it, it, it kind of simulates depth um, or it will do. And now I've got literally some yellow paint um, and I'm dabbing it in again, not particularly carefully. I'm kind of catching all of the, the pebbles. Um, pebbles aren't yellow, you say? Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, all I'm doing is adding some color. Same here. I've got some green, um, which I didn't bother getting a nice clean. Uh, I literally dumped it on the yellow and now I'm painting it on the yellow. So now I've got green and yellow in the, in the riverbed. And you, you're probably thinking, uh, yeah, this still doesn't look like a river. 
Um, again, you just have to trust me. And there I'm just wiping with that Battlefield 4 t-shirt. I'm wiping a bit of paint off where I've got it on some of the big rocks before it dries. And it's dry. Wow, this really is magic. Right. So now I'm going to paint the big rocks. Like I say, the first time I saw this, it seemed like witchcraft. <laughs> um, as you can see, I'm waving my hands around. Um, I did talk into the camera, but to be honest, it, because of all the other sounds going on and everything, it, it just didn't really work. So what I'm saying here is that I've got some yellow and I've diluted it. So it's quite a strong color still, but it's like a strong colored water, not a thick paint. Um, and I've got a big brush and then I've also got some brown. Um, again, I've thinned it down. So it's like um, brown water, but strong colored water, not, 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 you know, uh, not weak color. So I take the yellow, get me big brush and without planning anything, really without planning, I randomly blob it on the rocks. OK, and by the way, this is going to look terrible. So I'm blobbing it on the rocks and covering them um, at a third. I don't know exactly. You, again, I don't have a plan for how I'm doing this. Um, and that's certainly for the best. So I'm literally putting it on, letting it run. Um, and just you end up with this, which you think, and I, you know, I've splashed some into the riverbed and as you can see, I'm not particularly fussed. <laughs> um, none of this is like delicate, none, none of it. Um, so I just keep going. Dum, bum, 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 a little music while you watch. Um, it doesn't take too long, so that hence I'm not speeding this up. Um, but yeah, bear in mind, these are supposed to be big, in, you know, from scale terms, cliff face sized rocks, you know, huge rocks. Um, the scale of this eventually will become apparent. I realize at the moment it just looks like a big pile of brown <laughs> with, with yellow spotted stuff on it. Um, and, and it looks a mess. It looks like I've ruined everything I've done so far. So I, I'm not even bothering washing my brush or anything. I'm just getting some of this um, watered down brown. You can see it running and I'm doing the same thing with that. And it's overlapping the yellow and I'm just splodging it on. One thing that's quite important is you mustn't paint the whole thing. You must leave some white areas. Um, that is important. Um, and believe me, if you think this looks bad now, it's going to get worse before it gets better. At least I thought it got better. Hmm. I'll wait and see if there's any comments. Uh, but yeah, basically all of the big rocks, big blobs of watered down yellow, uh, big blobs of watered down brown. And to be honest, this brown could have done with a, a bit being a bit more red, a bit more of a reddy brown. I just didn't have one to hand, um, so which is a shame. And I could, you know, in retrospect, I could have made a color. I've got different color paints, but I'm pretty impatient, <laughs> so I basically went, ah, that'll do. <laughs> Whipped it off the shelf and painted it all over. So pretty simple. And this is me just going over a few bits where I feel it's a bit wishy-washy. Um, I'm just making the brown a little stronger. Maybe I had watered it down a little too much. Um, so I'm giving it some extra coats and making sure I get underneath any overhangs and stuff. 
Um, so you, whichever angle you look at it, it's still going to look right. Now, the, another important thing about this is at this stage, you must let the paint dry before you do the next stage. So this is going to get weird, folks. So yeah, look at that. How's that for realistic rocks? <laughs> uh, trust me, they do get a, a little bit better. So the yellow and the brown has dried. And what I've got here is a very, very watered down, darker brown. So this is the same color brown as I did the, you know, the sculptor mold bits, that other dark brown that you can see there. But it's very watered down. It's literally like water. Um, and But I had to let the others dry first. And then I take this and I paint it all over. No messing about, just slosh, slosh, slosh and paint over everything. And what this does is it ties the brown and the yellow together it, it kind of smooths the transition from one color to the other it doesn't turn them into cool looking rocks or anything it just ties the colors together i'm gonna i mean i'm not gonna make you sit through all of this i'm gonna stop this bit in a second but but take my word for it i'm gonna paint all the rocks like this otherwise i mean you don't want to sit here for 10 minutes watching me do that do you so I did that, I let it dry. As you can see, it still looks a bloody mess. And now I've got some of that dilute uh, PVA. It's like 50-50 PVA and water. And I'm literally gonna spray PVA all over the rocks, basically to seal them. Because the next stage is quite a wet stage and I don't want to, um, I don't want to wash the paint off basically so you spray this and it just seals it on but because it's dilute PVA it also soaks in because don't forget these are made of plaster so it also soaks in but it soaks in and seals it um, but it doesn't stop other stuff soaking in it's hard to explain but basically it'll stop the colors getting washed out by the next thing that I do to this because all it looks like at the moment is a brown and yellow mess i appreciate that so again i'm not messing about there's no finesse um and this is why i'm doing it at the back of my garage because there is just pva everywhere when i finish with this i just don't care um uh, yeah turn it over and give it a shake i have no idea why i did that um what i'm doing there is i'm blowing the tops just in case there's little pools where I don't want them um, uh, in case you're wondering I'm not blowing kisses at the damn thing so yeah so that's dry you'll be surprised to hear um, this is like the next day or the day after and now I've got some watered down black um, very watered down it is literally just black water and again no finesse just get it on there um but rocks aren't black you say don't worry <laughs> um i don't know what i'm doing get on with it there we go right again no finesse nothing i have done on any of this model requires fine motor skills it just you just slap this stuff all over now what happened here was when this dried i decided that it, the, the, the black wasn't strong enough so what i did do but i did not film was i added a little once it had dried i add a little more black pigment to the water just to strengthen it up a bit and i went over it again there's no rule for this it's it's a case of does it look right yes or no and it's obviously better to have a weaker solution and go over it a couple of times uh than to do it too strong and you've basically painted the whole thing black by accident so 
I also painted all of the brown bits. I painted everything, everything with a black wash. Um, and the thing about a wash is it basically runs into all of the little nooks and crannies and kind of highlights them uh, or, or the opposite, low lights them um, and adds shadow and it adds depth. Um, so at this point of making this thing, you've got to have in your head at this point where you're trying to go. Otherwise, you can't decide whether something looks right or not. Um, I realize this still looks like a mess. Um, that's one of the problems. No, yeah, problems with this technique is at this point, even me there painting this stuff on, I think, well, I've messed this up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I seem to have ruined it. But but luckily, because I have done it before, I kind of just had to have faith that it would be okay in the end, you know. And I'm painting it in the riverbed. I'm painting it everywhere. And like I say, um, I decided it wasn't strong enough. So I literally added more pigment to it once it was dry. And went over the thing again, um, as you'll see in the next clip. I'll chop a chunk out here. You don't need to see me um, constantly painting this thing. As you, so again, it just looks a mess. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't believe how much of a mess it looks. Um, yeah. That's it. I painted it black. I waited for it to dry. I painted it again.